Dr. Andy Galpin here, and we're back talking five-minute physiology. Today's topic, the physiology of strength. One of the questions I get asked a lot, or I like to ask my students actually, is, is it physiologically possible to get stronger without getting bigger? In another video, we'll talk about the physiology of getting bigger, or hypertrophy, and how that improves the strength. But what I want to ask here is, what's the physiology of true strength improvements independent of size gains, right? So I go through some training, five weeks later, I'm stronger, I'm not necessarily bigger, I don't have any more muscle mass. How is it physically possible I produce more force? Well, we have three components to consider. In fact, we have to just understand how contraction happens in the first place. So if I make my bicep move, in fact, I'll grab my dumbbell that was accidentally right here, and it happens to be 45 pounds, I didn't anticipate that, I was gonna curl this, but now I'm not going to. But if I could curl this, there we go, I got it. Okay. So what happened is my biceps muscles there that go through, they insert on the front of my arm and the bone. So when my biceps contract, they pull my bone, which actually makes this weight move. Okay, so I have one component of something pulling on my bone, a second component of the muscle contracting. The third component is me telling my muscle to contract. All right, so if we go actually in the backwards order there, the first thing we're paying attention to are our neurological. Okay, so what that means is it starts with your brain or somewhere down your, your brain stem or your spinal cord. And you have some sort of neurological activation. Now folks often refer to that as your CNS, and you hear a lot of strength coaches and people talk about that. CNS stands for your central nervous system, again, your brain, brain stem, and spinal cord. So you have some impulse from your neurological system. So one of the adaptations that we know happen is you simply get better at that process. You activate more motor units. You turn on the proper ones. You let go, let go of some that don't need to be on. And you learn to activate things in the right sequence. So you have a bunch of neurological adaptations. The second thing that can happen is the actual muscle, right? So what most folks don't realize, and, and I'm a muscle guy, so I give muscle all the credit, is that the muscle itself can get stronger, quote unquote, without necessarily getting any bigger. People realize that if the fiber gets bigger, of course it's stronger, but the contractile properties of the muscle fiber itself. So what I mean is if I take a muscle biopsy of your bicep, and then we take it into my lab, and we pull out individual muscle fibers, and we cook one end of those muscle fibers up to a force transducer, and tie their other end up to a piece of metal, the ability of that muscle to contract with more force is improved with strength training. A bunch of different physiological components to that, things like calcium sensitivity, um, potentially fiber type transformation. A bunch of other things allow it to produce more force without necessarily being any bigger. So we could be seeing neurological adaptations, we could be seeing muscle adaptations, we're probably seeing a combination. And then the third thing, which is what we started with, is your connective tissue. This is your fascia, right? This is the, the um, lining of each individual muscle fiber. So all of the individual fibers in your biceps have this fascia that surround it, then a bunch of those things are put together and we have fascia around that, and then we've got the entire muscle with fascia around that, and then in fact, your muscles all come together to make your tendons. Your tendons are what actually attach to your bone, and that's what actually allowed me to pull that dumbbell up in the air. So this is probably the forgotten child of performance or of, of all adaptation. This is the fact that we see improvements and changes at the level of the connective tissue. So this again would be the connective tissue around the individual fibers around the whole entire muscle and how that all comes together to form a tendon which inserts onto a bone which allows you to actually pull on the bone. So again, we've got three different adaptations. Probably all three of them are adapting at some level. Most folks give the neurological component most of the credit, especially early on in strength training adaptations. But we see these happening. This is also happening, but probably less well-defined, um, certainly a lot less research, and lots, a lot less well-understood. So that's it. That's our physiology of strength training. Hopefully that helped. 
Um, feel free to contact me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Dr. Andy Galpin, or check out the website, andygalpin.com, if you're not there right now, for more videos like this. Let me know if you have any questions, your thoughts, and if you liked it, uh, you know, let me know what you want to see next. I'm open for any topic. We'll see you next time on 5-Minute Physio.